What is communism? Unlike most countries in the world, in the Philippines, communism is still quite a big topic of discussion. It's quite controversial. People who are popularly associated with um, communist organizations have been threatened and killed. And the government has been increasing the funding for the anti-communist task force. So there's a lot of discussion about what communism is and why, um, well, actually, this is why I'm making this video. There isn't actually a lot of discussion about what communist communism is. Uh, Communism is more like an identification marker, more so than any kind of, you know, historical phenomena. So I want to just go into it a bit more. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. It'll be a short video, but we'll try, I'll try my best. Communist, uh, communism as a theory is popularly traced um, back to Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. And I'm not going to go through the whole um, theory of, com of communist society, but, you know, in general, it was the sense that communism is, a, it's, if you were to look at the world in like a timeline, and, uh, you know, we are somewhere here, currently we are in capitalism, at the end of capitalism was communism, which was, and so Marx was theorizing that uh, the rapid spread of capitalism will eventually turn into communism, which is this kind of uh, e equal, um, it's kind of a utopic society where everyone is kind of equal and um, everyone has shares in property and things like this. People, uh, there, there's no more inequality and there's no more, there, there's no more classes. So there's no more class divides and there's uh, no more state. There's no, there's no more need for a state to control things and there's no more class divisions. We're all in one like community, communal thing. So Karl Marx uh, theorized that, again, capitalism has many internal contradictions that will ramp up and cause the people who are working within the system to destroy the system itself. So the system will kind of destroy itself through its internal contradictions because of the rapid increase of the alienation of the worker, meaning you know, without going into too complex Marxist terminology, capitalism will become communist because people will be fed up with capitalism. Uh, so that's kind of just general, very simplified version of uh, the theory. And when it was first uh, being talked about in these intellectual circles, it was not wholly embraced immediately. There were lots of discussions on what Marx actually meant or how he thought that the communist society would come about. There were a lot of varying, arguing interpretations on what it is. Then there's this guy named Vladimir Lenin in uh, the 19, early 1900s who read the Marxist writings and came to the conclusion or the interpretation that Marx, through some of his writings, seems to have advocated for the possibility that we can actually get to the communist society quicker by so we can speed it up by creating these proletariat revolutions the idea and these violent revolutions that will kind of create before it will it's kind of you speed up the end of capitalism to bring forth socialism and the dictatorship of the proletariat and then that will eventually quicken the pace towards um communist society at the very end of it so communism in a sense is and, and this is true for all forms of communism, uh, for most forms of communism. Communist uh, society um, is trying to re so the communist system of government is trying to organize society in a way that it will reach the ideal um, state, which is communist. Communism is a state of, of, of things, and communist systems are trying to get society to reach that state. So all of communist Society, all of communist systems in, in the last hundred years have been in the intermediary state of trying to get to communism through doing all sorts of things. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. So when, when we talk about communist systems, co countries that take up this thing called communism, they're, they're actually what they're actually doing is not co taking up communism. They're actually taking up the road towards communism. So what actually ends up happening is that Every country that you know puts forth this revolution, so it begins with the Russian revolutions of 1917, and then the Soviet Union gets into uh, the Bolsheviks get, get into power, 
the Bolshevik communists in the Soviet Union take power and they, they become the first communist um, they become the first communist system meaning the first uh, they organize the first system of government that wants to move towards the communist uh, state, the state of communism. Now, every time a country would adopt this communist system, what that actually means is that they were joining the road towards the communist state. Or you can even argue it further to like the world communist state, meaning to the creation of a, a globalized communism that um, is kind of the goal of communism. Um, and so like you have like each country will slowly become communist until everyone as a planet will together be on the same road to communism and get to that communist um, utopic state. Now, so what what is going on is that whenever a party becomes the gets the mantle of um, whenever the communist party gets the mantle of the government, they are now what that actually means is that they have chosen to be on the road towards communism. But in reality, in 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 practice how they are trying to get the communist communism has been different depending on the country so if you compare the soviet union compare china compare albania compare yugoslavia compare north korea compared to cuba or you know all these countries that where the communist um party was able to take up the mat the reins of the whole um, society becoming the leading um uh, political force in the society in the country they have, in their own varying ways, tried to get the, the communist state. But the, the, they're all in the same path, but the actual, like the, the, the actual road, well, sorry, they're all in the same direction. They're all moving in the same direction, but the road is not very well paved. So they're all kind of experimenting to get to the communist state. So when people say that, um, so, so where sometimes you can hear from, sometimes people say that communist society has not been achieved. What that means is that all these different countries that went on the direction towards communism were, na- were never able to reach the communist state. But while they were on the way, while they were on that direction, they were in a sense a communist system. So again, there's a difference between a communist system and the state of communism, which is the goal of communism. I hope that wasn't too confusing. So the problem is when we talk about communism, it becomes very easy for us to use arguments. Pick, you know, picking different of these di- different countries, saying, "Look, this country did this, and it was a failure. Therefore, communism is wrong. Communism is bad." But what actually is going on is that because there are so many examples of how communism was attempted to be reached, uh, you can kind of pick and choose whatever argument you want in order to and in order to kind of present an argument, pretty much. Uh, so this becomes complicated because when you talk about communism in this in this way, I was only talking about communism as different states that have been able to achieve power within the, the country. And they, again, when they all tried to reach communism, they tried different paths. Some of them, most of them failed. And eventually, you know, now there are only a few uh, countries left that are communist states, uh, that, are communist, that are run by communist systems. There's China, Cuba, North Korea, Vietnam, n- not that many, Laos. But anyway, so... How does this have to do with red tagging and communism here in the Philippines? It seems a bit disconnected, right? So the, it, the, what actually is going on is that communist systems have been very different from each other, and they've tried different methods to reach the state of communism. But this is a different world from communist parties that have not yet been able to have control over the government, meaning that as long as a certain communist party has not, in a certain country, has not taken over the entirety of the government and tried out their specific path towards the state of communism, communist uh, groups have still proliferated within those countries. Because in a sense, you know, you can say, well, yes, I understand that there are certain communist societies that have failed um, because they were not able to reach communism. But in reality, in our country, communism wasn't tried yet by our ideas, and our ideas are shaped specifically to our situation. So it creates this weird situation where no matter what country you're in, and especially here in the Philippines, you can say, because the Communist Party has never really taken control and power, we can say we technically don't know if communism could succeed here through their ideas. And here specifically, it's ideas um, by 
uh, Jose Maria Singson, uh, Season, Jose Maria Season, who is particularly influenced by Maoism. So again, there's this whole other thing where many uh, communist parties around the world are more influenced than not. The, uh, the more, the, the, depending on the communist party in the country, they're influenced by different communist thinkers. So a big split, for example, with Mao and Stalin in the mid 60s and 70s, or, you know, again, there are many different kinds. Titoism, which is um, Yugoslavian communism. There's different kind of communism in um, Albania, in North Korea, in Vietnam, you know, Ho Chi Minh stuff. So again, there are many different ideologies. So, and depending on what country you're in, depending on what influenced the certain communist parties within your country, they would be um, blankist, so Maoist, or Leninist, or, you know, Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, or there's actually, um, in Peru, they have the Shining Path or whatever. So there are all sorts of things. So how does this help in talking about communism? The reality is that here in the Philippines, communism, again, we have to appreciate that communism is not, it's its, it's, its own thing. And also what, what that means is that it doesn't necessarily, it does not necessarily help to understand communism here by looking at communism in other countries or historical communism because it is a different ball game. It's a different, there's a, there are different nuances in the development of communism in the reactions to the government intervention, uh, the government kind of uh, tensions within with, against communism. So I think that to begin, and this is what I would suggest with this video, is I'm trying to say that before we can talk about communism in the Philippines, we must talk about communism in the Philippines. And that discussion, that education, that way of discussing these things, it's just not happening. We need to have a better if you if you want if you want to engage in this in the discussion about communism, one must engage with the history of the Communist Party in the Philippines. We must engage with the PKP, uh, the uh, Partido Comunista ng Pilipinas back in the 1920s and 30s, moving into the Hukba Lahap. Uh, organization uh, that they were affiliated with in the 40s and 50s. We need to engage with how our government has uh, de dealt with the communist problem. We need to talk about martial law, about how communism was supposedly uh, one of the reasons why Ferdinand Marcus declared martial law. We need to kind of examine all of these many different things before we can actually have an intellectual and in-depth discussion about what we can do about the issues that the people who are sympathizing with the Communist Party today. Uh, how, wait, what can we do about this? How can we deal with this? But because, because the reality is that we're just using, we're just throwing around the word communism, communist, and we don't actually understand what it means relative to our current society because we are not educated on it. I definitely don't think that when I was in school growing up, I had any understanding about what um, the communists here in the Philippines believe. And I don't think I had an understanding of the complexity of the issues and how it developed over time. Because if we continue to be in the society where we talk about communism in a way that is very closed off or in a way that we don't have an intellectual discussion about, we're never going to be able to solve this issue. Because the reality is that communism is complicated and communism within the Philippines is very complicated as well. And we need to actually engage with the local history and perhaps not even think so much or not as much about international history when talking about local communism because it's a very different ball game. And so I would recommend for people who are interested or who, who feel either sympathy or, you know, or antipathy towards uh, the CPP or the NPA to look into the history of these organizations so that the understanding of it would be more grounded in the local perspective as opposed to an international perspective because if you take the international route, you will... I guarantee it, you will get lost. And uh, it, it's just a big complicated issue that I think is quite relevant today. And again, in order to begin the discussion, we need to look up these organs, PKP, NPA, um, look at how the, these were, you know, what was the relationship between the communist parties, for example, with the insurrections in Mindanao insurrections or the different you know, they're just it's a very complicated issue with many different things and we're just gonna if you're just gonna keep ignoring it, nothing's gonna be fixed. We need to actually engage with it through history, through politics, and through 
a local understanding of things and not an international one.